But let's get back to the soap opera or scandal in New South Wales. If it's soap opera, Premier Gladys Berejiklian will survive the embarrassment of having it now come out that she has, uh, has had a secret lover, disgraced MP Daryl Maguire, who has taped secretly telling her of deal after deal he was trying to make with developers. And the Premier's odds of surviving this rose today when the Prime Minister dramatically stepped up his defence of her. Gladys has been a tremendous Premier and she has my absolute support. And uh, I, I thought she showed a lot of courage yesterday, but I also show, thought she showed a lot of humility, which is the Gladys I know. You know, we're all human, and particularly in those areas of our lives, and Gladys is an extremely private person and a person of tremendous integrity. And I want to you know, thank uh, particularly Don Perrottet and Brad Hazard and the whole team down there in the New South Wales government getting in behind her. That's the Prime Minister and Berejiklian's colleagues, the one the Prime, Minister's, uh, Prime Minister named, clearly counting on her defence that she is just a good woman with a bad taste in men, a fool for love, poor old Gladys. But if you see this as a scandal, and never mind that the Premier's a woman, Berejiklian probably won't survive. And today, on that front, wasn't so good after all. The background is that yesterday Berejiklian was grilled at anti-corruption hearings where she admitted she'd had a secret five-year affair with Maguire, a divorcee she'd actually sacked as an MP two years ago after he was accused of using his position to try to make money by peddling his influence. Berejiklian sacked him, said she was disgusted, yet secretly kept him as her boyfriend until just a couple of months ago when she realised anti-corruption officials had bugged their conversations. And yesterday, Vera Jicklian then had the mortification of having those recordings played at her at anti-corruption tribunal hearings, recordings in which her secret lover, when he was still an MP, told her about the many deals he was making with developers to make some money on the side. Here's just one example about a land development of Adjuries Creek that Maguire was trying to push in 2017 for a million dollar payday for himself. William tells me we've done our deal. So hopefully that's about half of all that gone now. That's good. Mm. I don't need to know about that bit. No, you don't. Yeah. You do not. Now, Berejiklian insists that she did nothing to help Maguire with any of his deals, and no one has accused her of doing anything corrupt herself. But is that good enough? Now, normally when the media goes into a feeding frenzy, my antenna go up, I get suspicious, so I don't like being with any mob, but I thought the questioning today of Barry Jicklin at the press conference raised issues that are important. Specifically, why did the Premier say and do nothing when this MP, and never mind that he's her lover, tells her about land deals as trying to broker using, it seems, his influence as an MP, which is an incredible conflict of interest. Here is just some of today's terrible press conference, terrible for Barry Jickling, with Sky News' Andrew Clonell making excellent points. Your problem is no one can take you seriously after this affair, can you? And it's not about the personal, it's about the professional. Why didn't you pull up Daryl Maguire in any of these phone calls? Why didn't you report any of this behaviour? He was clearly lobbying for developers while you were Premier and he was a Parliamentary Secretary. Why didn't you act on this, Premier? Uh, well, look, that's um, all your opinion, uh, Mr Clinton. It's but in I'll the evidence, this. Premier. At all times I've maintained... At all times, I've maintained a distinction between my personal and private life and the public office I yes, hold. Yes, but why exactly, didn't you is... tell your staff that it was outside his electorate and why didn't it raise alarm bells for you that he was lobbying for matters outside his electorate? It must have Premier. Why did you think it was OK for him to get a commission, to get a cut? Just explain that, please. Unfortunately, I don't. I don't. Or fortunately, I don't set the rules on what business interests MPs are allowed to do. They are based on what is in the pecuniary interest register. Clearly, that MPs must not knowingly and improperly use their influence to seek to affect a decision by a public official to further the private interests of that member. And you are aware that that is exactly what Daryl Maguire was trying to do in relation to the property at Badgerys Creek. I was absolutely not aware. 
which is why I didn't report he told anything. You on the call. Which is Premier, which is he told you on the call, didn't he? Which which is why <laughs> and that he never is, reported mis- it. He was rigorous in his attempts, and his attempts amounted to nothing. Now I doubt a male politician will survive a scandal like that. But good old Gladys, poor misled. Gladys, the victim of a rotten bloke she's now dumped, well, she just might survive a soap opera like that. Soap opera or scandal on that choice, Berejiklian's future now hangs. And I think if she were now to cry, poor Gladys will survive. Now, one problem for Gladys Berejiklian is that her government is way outvoted in the upper house, the legislative council. It is just 17 of the 42 seats there and the minor parties and independents, if they turn against her, she will get no legislation through if they have a mind to punish her. Joining me is Rob Borsak, leader of the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party, which is two seats in the council. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Rob. Does Gladys Berejiklian deserve a break? Is she just a good woman and a good premier who is just unlucky in love, let down by a bad man? Well, thanks, Andrew. No, I, uh, <laughs> there are some pretty clear obligations. She does not have to act corruptly. Uh, she has an obligation to the ICAC under Section 11 to report possible corrupt activities. It's very clear there. And she is a Minister of the Crown. Now, no one's going to convince me, Andrew, that she didn't know or, or didn't have reasonable grounds to suspect over the three or three and a half years that she had a very intimate relationship with him that he was doing something dodgy. And it's on the basis of that, I think, that she should have stood down, stood herself down, like she made John Sedati the sports minister in 2018 when she referred him. She should have stood herself down yesterday and waited for the final results. Because prima facie, from what I heard yesterday and listening to uh, Andrew Clennell's questioning there, he's putting his finger on exactly it. She potentially did commit an offence under the ICAC Act. And on that basis, well, while ever she's Premier, we will not be uh, supporting anything that she or her government brings to the House. Let me take you up on that point in a second. It doesn't even have to go to the point where she thinks that what he, uh, her uh, partner was doing was corrupt. She just merely had to know that he had a potential conflict of interest and she has an obligation under the yes. same Ministerial Code of Conduct to report that because uh, it says that well, she kept saying in these press conferences, hey, uh, I thought that he would re- uh, report, you know, any conflict of interest. Mm-hmm. I thought it was up to him. But under this code of conduct, it says a MP must, a minister must actually declare any conflict of interest by an immediate family member, which it defines as people who are in an intimate personal relationship. That covers this case, obviously. Obviously it does, and it covers this situation perfectly. So, you know, there's a number of areas where it's very clear that she's got obligations and he had obligations. I can't believe for one moment that she could not have understood and known. And, in fact, some of it did come out, as you mentioned earlier, clearly in evidence. She knew what he was up to. I mean, he wasn't known, Andrew, as dodgy Daryl in his electorate for no particular reason. <laughs> you know, he, 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 OK, Rob. Andrew, Andrew, right. Andrew he... He was the Arthur Daly of the Liberal Party, and they all knew it. Now, Rob, but the thing is, you know, you listen to talkback and all that, and you say, oh, Gladys, she's a nice woman. I don't doubt she's a nice woman. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt that she's done a good job in, in many areas. I think she's been the best Premier in handling the coronavirus. Put that to one side. Here, she's a good woman, uh, done, you know, done wrong in love. I mean, you don't have... uh, Your heart doesn't sort of melt at that at all? Well, no, not in these circumstances. Look, I also, like you, I I actually believe that she, along with the the health minister and the people in the health department in New South Wales, have done an excellent job uh, for New South Wales on COVID. It's fantastic. But, look, in the end of the day, that's not what it's all about. This is all about what it looks like and what it is. And how can she possibly pretend to lead this state in good standing when all this becomes public. She can't. She should have stood herself down yesterday and if she truly had no case to answer, she could then come back once the ICAC had finished its investigations and issued a report. Now, my heart melts for her, but not for the reasons that you're stating. Now, uh, Rob Borsak, um, 
I think Mark Latham's already suggested that he won't cooperate with any legislation while she's still Premier. What's your, what's your position? Uh, look, our position would be the same as Mark's. Um, on a lot of these sorts of things, we, we're a double act. <laughs> I hate to say that, but uh, in some cases, yes. And in this particular case, um, I just don't see why she should be allowed to bring uh, legislation to the House that will uh, require our support when we can't trust her. That's really what it gets down to. She's not providing us with the leadership that we think that this state is entitled to. She should have been open, she should have been honest, instead of dodging and weaving. If she'd stood herself down and she had no case to answer, then we would all know that she would come back and that would be the end of it. Instead, we saw the, uh, the, the left wing of the Liberal Party close ranks behind her and no one is prepared to have a go. Perrottet is supposed to be the man that's uh, going to get the nod, but he's been so badly damaged by his mismanagement of eye care, and she gave him a leave pass on that. He had to step up when the phone rang yesterday. Well, OK. Thank you for uh, saying it straight. Uh, Rob Borsak, appreciate your time. Thanks very much, Andrew. Cheers.